the time has come not just to speak out, but to really hear what one another is saying. Without that, it's all a bunch of noise. So I'm really saying something. Mama, mama, those words will forever be remembered. George Floyd, trapped, unable to move, just needed to breathe. Air became the most expensive commodity for him. He knew he was dying. In desperation and now incoherent, he called out to his mother. Yes, a 46-year-old man. That's what happens when you are desperate and watching your own death, remembering someone who protects or protected you, someone pleased to look after you when you were helpless. George Floyd was calling out to God through his servant, his mother. Three weeks ago, none of us knew George Floyd, but on Tuesday, his funeral was beamed live on Sky News and other channels, like he was some statesman. But the race is not to the swift. A lot happens to some at a most unexpected late stage of life. Parallel to the Sky News live broadcast, British Home Secretary Priti Patel, herself of Indian extraction, exhibited out of tune stands in referring to the protests in Bristol and Westminster as disgusting and sickening, failing to feel the pulse, which even her prime minister did. Perhaps because this has not been Indian lives matter or she suffers from slave mentality, for while violence is not the most appreciated act of complaint or defiance, it is serving a great purpose right now, and all need to fall in line. Nothing has warmed my heart as the fall of the statue of Colston in Bristol, and on Tuesday, a revival of the roads must fall for the removal of the statue of the imperialist that stands within the University of Oxford. The black race is the most disregarded and disrespected on earth, voted most likely to fail. Many have been colonized, imprisoned, and enslaved, but none quite like the black race. All other races actually look down on black people. The anti-black problem in the United States can be linked to Africa. Africa of 500 years ago and Africa today. For Africa is the motherland. We should be protecting our diaspora sisters and brothers, maintaining a good home in Africa so that they are proud of us, so that they can leverage on our worth. So this subjugation of blacks by blacks in Nigeria and Africa and unofficial apartheid is underpinned by tribalism, a form of racism. It continues today. While some nations here try to rise above this petty thieving and sectionalism, the major thrust is still the same. And behind all this is a quest for power, power to write the evil narrative, power to steal from the commonwealth of the people, power against one's own people. The police, the skewed conspiratorial, conspiratorial judicial system are exactly where racists and sectionalists will want to be. So when you come to Africa and see police brutality of black on black, it is a quest for power, which ultimately creates the enabling environment for apartheid and grand theft. The force, the police force that is, is now a natural home for many who carry evil bias, necessitating a change to change the criteria for enrollment kick out the thugs and evil sectionalists in the USA and in Nigeria, but most importantly, in all life. We must make it tough for evil, for the evil few to continue to manipulate the many. Prepare to fight in Nigeria. Prepare to remove the fake heroes on our Naira notes, named on our streets and adorned with undeserved national and professional awards. Cut down public salaries and staff, embrace technology, and drop the inferiority complex held for other races. My late mother predicted that in my lifetime, we could see a, gen a new generation sack Ikui and the like violently. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, I know you could hear the, you could hear the yeah. tan tan tan. Yeah. The I temperature mean, uh, in studio uh, what, what I like about what you said is, is the fact that you've been able to draw a correlation or look across from what's happening in America too. Because sometimes it's as if we're all focused on fighting, you know, racism, we're focused on, and we forget that actually, <laughs> There's a common, uh, do you say, denominator in the sense that we are also brutal towards ourselves. So you have, you know, police are dealing with the people they call Yahoo boys just because maybe they're envious of them, I don't know. And so you sort of say it's, it's in humanity. It's in humanity to be bully those they feel threatened by or to bully those they feel are inferior to them. You still hear of white on white killing. So I think if, uh, the sooner we recognize that it's a human problem rather than a racist problem, not that 
the racism doesn't exist, but to also see that you could also be in that position where you abuse power, then uh, the more likely we are to really take, take it seriously and be on our guard against it. Well, I mean, I, I liked uh, what you could, well, would, I, would you say you like it? But yeah, I mean, the point that you made that, um, you know, Africans are, or blacks are the most looked down upon as far as I, you know, the figures, the figures are out there. But um, you, the point that you made was that it was actually our fault, if I'm, if I'm exactly. understanding of it, okay. that yes, that is because we don't treat ourselves well we don't create a good environment back home, you know, it, I, and, I, and I buy into that. I do agree with that because I, I keep saying, you know, how can we expect to be taken seriously when we've left our country because we believe our country is rubbish and then we go over to another country and then we're now demanding what we don't even have in our own country, you know. No, but and one of the black Americans who had no option, they were taking their, their parents, were four Yes, okay, but let, let, then let's take it into a the smaller, double. yes, then let's even make it smaller. Also, black on black crime is mm. tremendously more than any of all these uh, figures that you can put together. So when we, blacks, blacks are killing blacks anyhow, you know, then you now want to say, oh, other races, is it, is it only considered brutality when white people kill black people. I like the point that Chuka made that uh, the state of Africa is directly, current modern state of Africa is directly linked to the conditions that black people face globally. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to point out that at a point in the 20th century, the kind of treatment that black people are accustomed to now was also extended to Italians, was extended to Irish people, thing. was extended to Koreans, and was extended to Japanese people. At a point, Japanese people in the US were all rounded up and put in the concentration camps during the Second and the World Jews War. Have just had their own before and during, exactly. What changed their situation was not that the US came and gave them civil rights, so that someone paid them reparations. Or, exactly. That's not what changed. What changed was that their home countries became successful. Mm -hmm. So they were able to leverage that. So if you tell a Japanese American, oh, go back home, it's not an insult. Mm -hmm. If you tell him, go back to Japan. Japan is a better country than the US. But you can't tell if an African American, go back to Africa, that's a slur. Why is it a slur? Because Africa is in a terrible state and they consider it to be an insult. Mm -hmm. So the state of Africa directly is linked to what black people go through worldwide. So mm -hmm. what we do to ourselves in Nigeria essentially is what leads to people like George Floyd getting killed. The decisions we make here have a direct impact on how our long lost... I still, I still beg to differ. I mean, well, I, 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 it's, it's not that I don't see your link. Don't have much uh, let me just make the point briefly. It's just not that I don't see the link, but I still want to separate it. It's a bit like when people say, if you dress provocatively, you're entitled to be raped. I see that some people are drawn by that, but it doesn't mean somebody who is a rapist is a rapist. Someone who is a, a killer at Definitely. heart and will kill you because of Definitely. your skin yeah, color or you know, because he looks down on absolutely. you as an evil human being. I agree. Being. I agree. However, it doesn't matter what's happening. However, down, however, in the world, don't have options, in the world of like, uh, in the world of geopolitics, you have to assume that everyone is a bully and everyone mm -hmm, is a killer. Exactly. So it, I, I, I remember I had a mentor who once said that on the on in this world you have to assume that you only have what you can defend. You have to assume that everybody is, is trying to take what you have. That's, the world is a very cold and cruel place mm. in geopolitical terms. It's a, it's a bit of an emotional thing for me. Um, I, I, I have been a victim of, of some um, discriminative dealings um, while I lived for a short while in America. And it, it goes beyond the simple explanation of uh, uh, because we are not uh, doing what we're supposed to do and all of that. It's, it's, is a deeply historical issue and it has come along. But having said that, what cannot be taken away, uh, which I, I, I think is a part of the matter, is the fact that if Africa rises up today and we live up to the promises that this continent represents and we become respectable in the Committee of Nations, it will have an impact on how blacks are treated everywhere. I agree. Chuka, it's like I could feel your heart with that advocacy. We look to a time when we would identify with one another's needs and fight one another's battles. I'll be framing what that looks like with my advocacy after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. 
it's that greed it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage we're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat i would you know suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable there was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.